Hello friends. Today I'm going to teach you how to make apple scrap cider. I am starting by taking all of the apple scraps that I have saved. This is just peels and cores that I collected over a period of time and put in the freezer. So I'm putting these in a big pot and I am topping it off with water. Now how much you make will be determined by how many scraps you have saved and how full you fill it with water. I've gone ahead and I've turned the burner up to high to get things going. I brought it up to a small boil and now I'm just going to give everything a stir. And I'm going to do this periodically over the course of about 24 to 48 hours, depending on how strong you want your cider to taste. So here it has been a while, this has been simmering or boiling rather, and I'm going to turn it down, give it another stir. And as you can see, all of the scraps have started to change color. It's kind of getting difficult to discern which ones were green apples, which ones were red apples. Everything's going to look exactly the same by the time this is all said and done. And I've gone ahead and adjusted the temperature. Now I'm gonna let this simmer for a very long time. And here it is the next day. I actually put this in the refrigerator overnight and then picked this project back up the next day. It's been simmering on the stove for about an hour or two to bring it back up to temperature. And I'm gonna taste. So at this point, it's going to taste like a very weak apple juice. The next step is to strain out all of your solid matter, your apple cores and peels. Gave it a good mash, make some more room. Okay, and now I've done that, so I have this fresh pot with just the liquid. So I'm going to add some cloves. I didn't really measure here. This is the part where you get to totally customize your apple cider. I think I put about eight to 10 cloves, whole cloves, not ground clove. Ideally, I would have liked to have used cinnamon sticks, but I didn't find those in my cabinet until a few days later. So I just went with some ground cinnamon, Again, I'm not really measuring, but I would estimate about a half teaspoon. I added probably about a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then um, I used up the last of my brown sugar here, and then I have what I think is called demerin sugar, that sugar in the raw. I added that to, to total about a cup, maybe half a cup of brown sugar. You can sweeten this with honey, or syrup. I just chose brown sugar because that was what I had on hand. From this point, it is totally customizable. You can add oranges and lemons, which I would have done, but I didn't have those on hand. You can add whatever spices you desire. And then I let this simmer so that all those flavors could meld for about another hour or two giving it a stir every once in a while to make sure that the sugar was fully dissolved. And then go ahead and turn up the sound a little bit to hear my children's reaction to how this tasted. Mind you, they've been on a pretty good apple cider kick. Okay, this is 
about a second, it'll cool off quick because I'm trying to put it too. So optionally, you can can this and make this pantry stable. We already had a gallon of apple cider in the refrigerator, which is why I chose to can this. So I'm pouring it into a gallon pitcher just to make it easier to pour into the jars instead of doing all that ladling. Also to strain out the last bit of the cloves and such. I ended up with uh, five quarts here. So these are clean but not sterile jars. If you have sterilized jars, processing time is only five minutes. If you want to use clean but not sterile jars, you just up the processing time for 10 or 10 minutes or longer. It doesn't really affect what happens to the contents of the jars in this case. So here I just filled all of the jars to that bottom lip on the top rim and then I'll go ahead and top them all off to the appropriate headspace which in this case because this is a liquid and it will heat throughout pretty quickly headspace is one quarter an inch so if you're not familiar headspace is the distance between the contents of the jar and the very very top rim of the jar. So as you can see, I'm filling them up quite full. Now this isn't sticky, it's not messy, so I just went ahead and wiped the rims. Oh, in this case, there was a little something in the jar. So I'm just wiping the rims of the jar. I did not use um, vinegar or any cleaning agent. I just made sure that there wasn't any liquid on them. Placed my lids. And my rings to finger tight. To the canner my jars go. Now I looked here and my jars weren't quite covered by water so I'm just going to add a little more water. You want your jars to be covered by about an inch to two inches of water when you are water bath canning. You'll notice that my burner is relatively high so that this will heat up pretty quickly. And again, your processing time is going to be five minutes for sterilized jars and 10 minutes or longer if you don't want to sterilize your jars. And processing time starts when the water is boiling.
I do like to let my jars sit in the water for five minutes with the lid off before I pull them out of the water. And I give them a little tip just to get the water off the lid of the jar. And here is your beautiful finished product. Thanks for watching.